Remember when going to the movies was fun? I don't. That's why I'm asking you. I'm hoping you can jog my memory. I've had a ton of amazing experiences at the movies. That's why I'm a movie fan and have a movie channel, Adam Does Movies, which you should subscribe to. You should really subscribe because I'm promising you a bunch of content going forward, movie reviews, rants, roasts, and I'll be doing another video like this, except for it's gonna be the positives of going to the movies. Back in the 90s and even early 2000s, when there was still some life and energy and excitement coming out of the movie Cineplex. But today's video is not that. Today's video is on current movie theater experiences, where I'm at specifically. Maybe you can relate, maybe you can't. You might be from America, you might be from Europe, you might be somewhere else completely where your theatrical runs are nothing but magic, nothing but beauty. And I, I envy you for that because that's completely the opposite of what I'm dealing with. Quite the contrary, as a matter of fact. Let me give you a rundown of a typical movie theater experience for me now going forward. Now, I understand that I am a movie critic that goes to movies every single week, sometimes two movies a week. So I am going to have a lot more run-ins with sketchy individuals, with some bad scenarios, with just overall worst times at the movies. I recently had a conversation with someone, this is definitely a true story and not something I'm making up on the fly, who said, Adam, they recognized me because of my immense popularity online. They said, Sir, Adam, they, they call me Sir, of course, he came up to me with tears in his eyes and said, Sir, why is the movie theater so bad now? I remember just a couple years back having the time of my life, having a fucking ball going to the movies, baby. And I turned to this peasant, as I often do, and said, Please wipe your eyes. You look ugly when you cry. And then I addressed his concern. And I said, yeah, this is the case all around. People are feeling the pain. Another person recognized me. This story is absolutely 100% true and not made up for the purposes of this story. He came up to me also, tears in his eyes. Sir, are you sure? Because they're so happy to see me. They're, they're crying uncontrollably because they're so happy to see me. Sir, are you sure that it's not just because you go to way more movies than most people that you're having worse experiences, but overall, it's still just as grand as it was five, seven, ten years ago? I turned to that one and I punched him right in the jaw. He fell to the ground because it was such a dumb question. I couldn't be bothered to give any sort of a response other than physically harming him. On the ground, of course, he thanked me for letting my fist touch his face. Part of me is now implanted onto him. He scrambled and ran away. Thank you. Th thank you. <laughs> the other one, acknowledging that he spent too much time in my presence, also fled the scene. But the point remains. Movies have gotten way worse to go to because of multiple things that I'm going to lay out on the line right now. It's really a five-prong approach to this problem. Those prongs have been made up. I don't know if there's five. There might be seven. There might be two. Number uno, people are trash. That's something that's withstood the test of time. It was like that 20 years earlier. It's going to be like that 200 years later. People are garbage. But because of society's turn to the evil dark side of technology mainly phones, that trash has become a heap. A dumpster fire all over the place. In public settings, in hospitals, and libraries, you name it, people are fucking terrible. Oh, and by the way, if you like hearing me rant about things, I have a brand new second channel, Adam Does Rants. That's exactly that. So make sure to subscribe over there. But let's continue. People are absolute garbage. And because of this power they have in their hands at their fingertips they're able to turn anybody's good time into a bad one let's run down several situations where this takes place number one i'm in the theater i'm sitting down the trailers are done the movie's about to start oh the movie has started five minutes into the movie ten minutes in the movie and look who comes walking in johnny mcfat ass and his dumb mcfat family they come waddling in bloop, 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 popcorn spilling out <laughs> Popcorn shaking, wrappers everywhere, and what comes out? A phone that looks like it's a lightsaber. That light shoots across the sky, reflects off the lights up top, hits me in the eyes, and now I'm completely off the movie, and I'm looking at McFaddy and the fam. 
because he needs his phone out to find his seat. And he's looking at this thing, then he looks up in the rows, <sniffs> slurps the pop. <sniffs> Where are we at? Where are we at? Clonk, 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 clonk. Where, where are we at? Just pick a fucking seat and sit down. Nobody else is coming this late. There's no usher that's going to click on the light and check and make sure everybody's got their tickets assigned right to the seats that they're supposed to be in. There's no ushers at all. Ushers don't exist anymore. <laughs> at least not by me. Phone scenario number two, which comes up so often, it's disgusting. You're watching the movie and not even five minutes into it, phone comes out, max brightness. A dude can't be bothered to watch what's in front of him anymore. He's already bored or his mind's running a million miles an hour. He's got to check his email. He's got to check the gram. He's got to go on Twitter. He's got to go on Facebook. He just has to do anything else because his time is so important and this movie's not capturing him. It's not 100% captivating him, so he has to find something else so he can do two things at once in tandem. Doesn't matter who else is watching the movie. It's not our concern. Our problems are not his, okay? So we should just let him do his thing. And if you say anything at this point in time, they look at you like you're the asshole, like you're the bad guy. I had a small conversation on the artist formerly known as Twitter, and the person brought up how it's getting old, telling people to get off their phones. Now I just move. And that's where I'm at. I don't tell people anymore to get off their phones because I'm fucking sick of it. And there's more than one person usually in the theater now on them. So I now pick a seat ahead of time because they're pre-planned out seats that you pick. I'll go up closer to the screen, even though that's not where I want to be back in the day. Again, I'll talk about this in another video because it was so much fun. Back in the day, I would show up to the theater early before seats could be picked. And I would make sure I get that middle of the theater, middle row, middle column, boom, right dead on to that bad boy, ready to go. I'd save my friends seats so they'd come with early. We would talk it up about the theories and the things we're excited for in this film. Those days are gone. Those days are long gone. Now I show up at least 20 minutes into the movie because there are at least 25 to 30 minutes of trailers before the film starts. And yes, I know trailers used to be fun before I saw them four months early online and they're all old hat. So yeah, people need their phones out to just see where they're walking now because they're always getting up and moving around and they can't be bothered to just use their fucking eyeballs. Even though your eyes adjust pretty damn early. We got to use those phones for everything. And then people are on them all the time. They can't be bothered to just watch. I was at a movie one time, I shit you not, and a parent had his kid on an iPad watching something else. This kid's watching like uh, Paw Patrol while I don't even know what's playing on. It doesn't matter. But what is going on? And there was volume on the screen. Are you out of your mind? You get a flock of teenagers coming in. That's game over. That's an endgame scenario I don't want anything to do with. This has been happening more often than not. They show up 45 minutes into a film. They're just jumping around, riff to rift in, in theaters. So they come in, they go to the way back. Phones are everywhere. It's like a freaking rave back there. People are trash. There's going to be those that talk during the whole film, of course. We all know that. That's a staple. That's old school, right? That's old school. We've just magnified things and made it worse. So that's prong one. People are garbage. Prong number dose. We have been conditioned this way. Hollywood told us that you can just stay home and watch movies. We're going to bring them to Max day one exclusively. We're going to bring them to Disney Plus, Amazon Prime, Netflix, Apple Plus, Peacock. You want to see this movie? You can watch Halloween day one on the cock. It's in the movies. It's in your home movies right on the cock. And when you're at home, anything goes. Mom can tell her story about the crazy lady at work who's trying to ruin her life. Tanner can talk about the bully at school and what a jerk he is. Marissa can go to the back, pop some popcorn. Get herself a drink. Go to the bathroom halfway through. Pause the movie for her. She's got to pee. She's drinking a bunch of soda. Bless her heart. They brought all that into the theater. So that when they go a couple times a year to the Barbie, to the new Illumination Despicable Me movie, they're going to be loud. 
They're going to be getting up constantly, checking their phone, going to the bathroom, back and forth, back and forth. It never ends. It never ends. And because this conditioning has been going on, we get to prong number three. People aren't going to the theaters. Unless it's a really big event. And even if it is, sometimes they don't go to the theaters. The Fall Guy's not doing well. But that means the theaters can't operate at max capacity. They don't have employees working as much. My Regal is a shit show. And it's the only option I have. It's the only theater in a 30 mile radius to me. Otherwise I have to drive an hour and guess what I have to go to? Another Regal! I moved to a part of the state that has nothing to offer for theaters. Not a great idea. It wasn't smart of me, but the, it just was a nice area at the time. I don't have any options. And that Regal doesn't have enough employees to work. So there might be three people, three or four employees to cover 16 different screens, plus the concessions, plus the bathrooms that are always broken because they can't keep them fixed. There's too many people coming and going, but not enough to justify more staff. So these people are overworked, underpaid, underappreciated, burnt out. They're not going to put in their A game, I can tell you that right now. And I know this is anecdotal, but I'm sure it's happening across the board. There's going to be understaffing at theaters. They're not going to have people running out to matinee showings like they used to. There used to be a time. Back in the Stone Age, when there was a ticket counter, there was a booth that you would actually walk up to and say, one for this, please. And they would hand you your ticket and say, thank you, sir. Enjoy your show. And you'd walk on and there'd be concession stand people working. And there'd be a person who took your ticket, an usher, who would show you where the theater is. There might even be people that check what's going on in the movie as it's going to make sure that people aren't up to no good. No monkey business taking place. No shenanigans happening all that's gone all that's gone now you have two or three people doing all of it my regal is so desperate for money that they're now doing ads on the regal app which i use because i'm a member i get that 24.99 a month or whatever for unlimited movies maybe it's 21.99 it's a great deal it's too good of a deal if you ask me because that's where all the riffraff comes in from. They have carte blanche access to go to any movie, anytime. It doesn't matter. So they, they treat the theater like their house. They got their blankets. They got their pillows. They got all their snacks from home. They're taking naps in the theater. It's embarrassing. It, people should be embarrassed, but they're not. Because they have no shame anymore. Because they live most of their life online. And don't care what people think. Which is... <laughs> when you have a society, that's a tough thing. That's a little bit tough. On the Regal app now, after you purchase your ticket, there are pop-up notifications for things completely unrelated to the theater experience. <laughs> It'll be like, do you want to save 20% on a hotel with booking.com or some fucking crazy shit? Sign up for an Apple Plus gift card. What? And it doesn't look nice. It's like ghetto. It's really crappy. I look at that app and I'm disgusted and I think, wow, they have no money at all to put into any of this and they're desperately just trying to get something out there. I don't know what prong I'm on. I forgot. I don't even know why I'm calling them prongs. This whole thing has gotten away from me. That's what happens when you rant. It, it's a rant. It's not structured. It's just completely off the cuff. Hopefully you're a little entertained by my misery. There are brand new $200 million movies hitting the big screen that you will be able to stream from home within a month. Those movies will be at home to stream on one of the services because they have exclusive rights. There's a deal, whatever. Not every movie is going to be that way. But that is a huge problem in the eyes and the minds of the customers because to them that says, I can wait. I have no problem waiting a couple more weeks or a month or two. What, what, what's that in the grand scheme of things? And that kind of pushes me to my last point, which is people don't care to go to the theater anymore. There's too much entertainment already. There are TV shows launching every single week. There are new video games coming out all the time. There's so much stuff on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram. People don't have time for all of it. There's so much to look at. So sitting for a two and a half hour movie, that's not great to most people anymore. That's not appealing anymore like it used to be. 20 years ago, absolutely. We didn't have all this stuff at our fingertips. So getting out to a theater, 
getting a little bit dressed up, looking nice, maybe grabbing a bite to eat and going to something that you know is going to blow your socks off. Yeah, that's a great, perfect night out on the town. Now you can sit in, wear your pajamas, order food in, not have to see anyone, look at your big TV, have your phone out, have your tablet, jerk off, do whatever you want to do. All at the same time. You want to talk about entertainment. Oof. You want to talk about right at your fingertips. Oof. I don't know. Movies have had ups and downs, of course. The theaters have had problems over the years. They always bounce back. Hollywood bounces back. This feels different. I've been told by several people now that Hollywood Boulevard is not what it used to be. The celebrities you're seeing there now are a bunch of influencers walking around with their selfie sticks. The Schwarzeneggers, the Stallones, the ever, they're all aged out. They all have kids doing their own things. And a lot of those kids are influencers. That seems to be the trend now. And the movie industry itself is just trying to stay relevant. Of course, the Netflixes and the streaming services are doing great because they're churning stuff out. But again, because that churn is so frequent, you're not getting the quality you would normally expect. Instead, it's all just kind of like Hallmark-esque, throw up another Christmas movie using the boilerplate. All we need are people to watch for a little while. They only have to hit play and then they can go back to doing whatever they're doing as long as we're getting the views, as long as they're saying on our app and we can promote it because we got Ryan Gosling in this one or we have Chris Pratt in that one, that's all that matters to us. Wild times. All I know is it's very, very different than it was even five years ago. I go to the theaters because I love going to the movies. I don't love going to the movies anymore. I don't love going to the theaters anymore. It has become so rare for me to go there have an amazing experience and walk out or to go there, have a great experience and walk out more often than not. It's a very mediocre time with a very mediocre to outright bad film. Yes, there's still good stuff coming out, but it's, it's rare. It is very rare. That brings me to my final point, the price of the movies. This is going to range depending on where you live, of course, but I think that it's probably pretty average to spend $10 on a movie ticket. For me, I know it's like $11.50 at Regal. I, again, have the pass, so I, I pay the $22 a month and I'm good. But if I take my kids, just two kids, that's 20 some dollars just for the movie tickets. Since they don't go that often, of course, they're going to want an Icy. They're going to want a popcorn. It is very common to drop about 45 to 50 bucks just on the two kids. That's not counting me because I'm covered. But if I wasn't, that's an additional $10.00. You're looking at $55, $60 for three people. You take a family of four, I can easily see you spending $100 or more, depending on what you guys buy while you're there. That is an insane amount of money to go to a lot of the crap that gets shit out these days. But theaters can't drop the prices because they're already barely afloat. So the $7 popcorn, the $7 small drink cannot change. And I'm not shitting you. That's how much a small drink is now. It's $7 at Regal. What's the solution then? I have no idea. Make better movies? Sure. You look at something like Cameron's Avatar. I didn't like Avatar 2. I, I actually hate Avatar 2. But look how much money it made. It drew people there because it was a spectacle. Look at Barbenheimer. They utilize social media. They got all these fans to go out. Look at the Taylor Swift concert movie huge box office returns but these are huge events that have a viral background behind them or it's james cameron either way what do you do about the smaller movies well i think that's just it hollywood needs to wise up and realize that you know what maybe the fall guy costing 200 million dollars or whatever it was with a huge marketing campaign behind it not going to make that money back we're talking about a romantic comedy action film those are two genres with very distinct audiences that you're mashing together and for that budget you are going to have a hard time making a return on your investment you need to scale back if you're going to do that the budget for these movies is out of hand 
and they need to be smarter about what's going to work for the audience, how much they can spend and realistically get a return on that investment. Okay, I've rambled far too long. There's like seven different conversations I could have just jammed quickly into this rant. Hopefully it made even some sense. You were able to stay with me. I don't even know if I stayed with myself. But thank you for listening, watching. Please, again, subscribe to the channel if you like this sort of content. If you really like the conversation, please think about commenting below and giving a super thanks if you're on YouTube. There's a little icon you can say, super thanks. Here's five bucks, Adam. Great job. Here's 10 bucks. Love this combo. Keep it up. And hopefully, I'll catch you next time.